pump rules, but through the lens of Ariana versus all of the women, all of the ladies. So Ariana is pretty much beefing with everybody, except for she's not necessarily beefing with Katie, but I think that's out of mutually assured destruction because of something about her. So let's go through Ariana beefing with everybody. And as we do, I want to know, are you team Ariana or team Lala? Team Ariana or team Sheena? Team Ariana or team Katie? Team Ariana or team Rachel? So let's break down every single situation. And also, I think this is also a kind of a good conversation around female friendships. You know what I mean? how that can come and go and and how that sort of affects people. And I will say the theme overall is everyone's like, oh, everyone's jealous of Ariana. I personally don't think that. I don't think anybody is jealous of Ariana. And I think a lot of times, particularly when it comes to female friendships, it, women are always like pitted against each other as in, oh, this person's doing well. So, and because you have an issue with it, you must be jealous. No, you could have an issue with someone. Doesn't make you jealous of them. It just means you have an issue with them. You know, jealousy and having an issue with someone are two different things. So as you guys can probably tell whose side I'm on, but I'll wait to, to expose that later. But I want to know what you guys think about just the conversation around female friendships and jealousy. What does that mean, right? So first, let's talk about Ariana versus Lala. Okay. So this is according to Us Weekly. It says, Lala Kent addresses rumor Ariana Maddox eviscerated her at the Vanderpump Rules reunion. Number one, can we stop recycling words? We already use the word eviscerated for um, Erica Jane and Kyle Richards for the Beverly Hills reunion. Let's find new words, people. Anyway. Lala Kent teased where her relationship with Ariana Medic stands after filming the Vanderpump Rules season 11 reunion. I think the exact fan tweet was Ariana eviscerated Lala at the reunion and it was a, and it was friendship ruining. And only one of those things is true. Lala said during the Wednesday, March 20th episode of the talk, I'll let you all decide. As the cast got together on Saturday, March 16th to film the Bravo reunion, Rumors swirled about certain cast members being on the outs after season 11. Lala and Gina Shea in particular have been called out for filming with Tom Sandoval after his cheating scandal with Raquel Levis. I stand by everything I said last season, even last season's reunion, and I stand by everything I said this season, Lala continued on Wednesday. I'm in a different place than I was last year. Scandal ran very parallel with where I was in my heartbreak after my split from Randall, so I was out for blood. She added, now before we started filming this season, I knew I was going on this journey to potentially bring another child into the world. And I just knew I need to be soft. I need to try to practice compassion. I appreciated that when it, I appreciated that when people did it for me. I would appreciate it if someone did that for my daughter, if and when she messes up tremendously. Before season 10 premiered last year, Lala and Randall 52, who share Ocean Now 3, called it quits. Vanderpump Rules season 10 picked up with Lala facing, facing life as a single mother. Well, as a co-parenting mother. Because you guys know how I feel about throwing around that single mother term. <laughs> she's, she's a co-parenting mother. Let's call a thing a thing. Which led to her journey with IUI. She announced earlier this month that she's expecting her second child via a sperm donor. Bravo viewers were in for a surprise in March 23 when news broke about Sandoval split from Ariana. We all know about that. Okay. So basically, the beef between Ariana and Lala is this. That... Lala basically feels that Ariana has gotten too big for her britches, that she's very self-absorbed. She's all about herself. You know, Lala's confused. You know, you're saying that Sheena can't hang out with Sandoval. You're saying I can't hang out with Sandoval, but yet you live with him. You know, it seems to be a little bit of hypocritical for you to say that we can't be friends with him and hang out with him, but yet you still reside in the same home with him. And then, you know, Lala would bring it back a lot to like her situation with Randall and all of that stuff. And then she also felt that 
um, Ariana was being a little bit not a good friend to Sheena when Sheena was being like ten toes down for her, but she wasn't really reciprocating that same type of loyal loyalty, like not telling Sheena that she got Dancing with the Stars and like other opportunities that came up that she knew would be either important to Sheena or things that you would just normally share with your friends. And that Ariana kind of got a big head about everything and felt holier than thou. Now, this is where I land on this situation. I don't think that Lala is jealous of Ariana because we're getting a lot of that. Oh, they're jealous. They're jealous. I don't think that. I think that what happened was both Lala and Ariana were in very similar yet not similar situations. And I think Lala was raising awareness to how what happened in her situation versus what happened in Ariana's situation. Being number one, both Lala and Ariana were at some point the other women to greater or lesser extents. We're going to call a spade a spade. Ariana was cheating with Tom when he was with Kristen. And Lala was cheating with Randall when he was with his wife. They both were the other women. They both got cheated on in very big ways. Randall was cheating on Lala and maybe doing some other nefarious, gross things that he has allegations and lawsuits and all of that going on. I'm not going to touch on that stuff because it's really dark and people like to sue people for having opinions. But just Google it, LA Times article, Hulu documentaries on the evil and the alleged evil and darkness of Randall Emmett, which in my personal opinion does supersede what Tom Sandoval did. Also, um, Lala's kind of like, and I also have a child. Like I have a full human being with this person. And I'm also trying to figure out how to take care of my child and navigate that while breaking up with this person who has cheated on me, who has done all these horrible things to me, but Ariana gets to stay in the house and they don't have children. And yes, he cheated, but like a lot of people get cheated on. And like, we get that, you know, we're not saying that your pain isn't meaningful, but you're not the first person in the history of the world to have a cheating boyfriend. When quiet is this kept, you had no problem being just as dismissive and narcissistic and rude to a lot of people, just like he did. To be honest with you, Ariana and Tom Sandoval are very, very similar. They have very, very similar personalities. They're condescending as hell. They're dismissive as hell. They think they're the smartest, coolest person in the room. And they're not very nice. And that's my personal opinion. I personally don't like Ariana as a person. Not personally, because I don't personally know her. But I don't like her... I don't like how she presents herself. She is mean. She is. You, you go back and watch how she's treated all these people on the show. She's not a very nice person. Doesn't mean I don't have compassion for her. And it doesn't mean I don't think that what happened to her was wrong. But she's not that nice of a person. And so I get where Lala is coming from where she's just like, listen, I'm not perfect. Nobody's perfect. But I had something really horrible happen to me and the entire world didn't bend at my knee because this happened and I had to take care of me and my child. Now, where I disagree with Lala is where she comes at Ariana about living in the house. You know, Lala had to get her child out of that home, I think, for like protection and all this other stuff going on that I totally get you know, whatever situation she was in, she had to physically remove herself and her child for safety or for whatever. Okay, I get that. That stinks. Where, I, But I don't agree with she should hold it against Ariana that Ariana didn't have to leave the house. Because if I'm Ariana, I'm not leaving the house either until it is financially responsible and financially sound for me to either leave the house keep the house and get bought out or get bought out and leave the house. I'm not leaving the house either because my name is on it and it, and I have a right to, to it. So on that stance, I understand what Ariana is coming from. She's like, I put my money into this. My name is on this. I'm not leaving until it is the financially responsible, responsible thing for me to do. So on that stance, I totally understand where Ariana is coming from. 
My issue with Ariana, and I'll repeat this when I get to the other ladies, do a deeper dive on that, is that she, in my opinion, hasn't really copped to how she has treated the other women in the past. She's been mean to Lala. She's been dismissive to her. She's been just as bad as Tom has. And you can't just say, well, Tom didn't like you, so I didn't like you. It's really his fault. No, you're an adult. You're a grown woman. You didn't like Lala because you didn't like her. And you were mean about her situation just like Tom was because that's how you felt. And that's what you chose to say. So own your stuff and say, yeah, you know what? I did, you know, say X, Y, and Z about you and and co-sign stuff and be dismissive towards you. But now I'm expecting you to have this sort of blind loyalty to me when I never even really rocked with you like that. So I get why Lala's like, look, yeah, something bad happened to you. Something really shitty happened to me too. But the world did not fall at my feet because I wasn't, quote, the perfect victim. And we've talked about this in the past where it's in our society, there's this sort of unattainable, I idolized version of what a victim is. And if you are a woman who is attractive or is strong or is opinionated, or if people think that you think you're better than me or you're, or you have money or you're dating a man with money, somehow if something bad happens to you, you deserve it. But if you're more, but if you're a different type of woman, more submissive to the man, like, um, Ariana was with Tom, long suffering and all this other bull crap. Then all of a sudden, when the same thing happens to you, you're a martyr and everybody identifies with you and you get the revenge body and you get all this other stuff. When at the end of the day, these are two women who are imperfect because we're all imperfect, who were treated very, very horribly by two men. But yet one gets called a mistress and everything else and another one gets exalted to this untouchable status. Because in our society, we still have this myth of what a victim looks like and is supposed to be. And a lot of women who own their power and own their voice, get they get punished for that. Because I bet you if Tom Sandoval had the money and the clout and the influence that Randall had or pretended to have or whatever it was. And then this happened to our to Ariana, I bet you the general response would be very, very, very different. Oh, she's nothing but a gold digger. She deserved it. Blah, 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 blah. What did you expect would happen to you? And that's a, that's a bigger conversation. But I think that's what they're getting to. It, it, it even happened with Stassi. Stassi, imperfect person. But when Jax was sleeping with Kristen, her best friend, a lot of people were like, well, you deserve it because you're mean, Stassi. You think you're better than everybody, Stassi. You're this, that, and the third, Stassi, blah, 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 blah. And Stassi had never even cheated on, on, on Jax, right? So again, it's like, unless you are sort of this long-suffering woman if something bad happens to you when it comes to affairs or men, somehow the world thinks you deserved what you got. And I think that's more of where Lala is coming from with this whole situation, you know? And I do think that, you know, Ariana stands on like, I can't, you can't talk to him if you don't want to talk to me and blah, 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 blah. It's a, it's a bit, it's a bit much. It's a bit much. It's a lot. So I want to know what you guys think when it comes to Lala versus Ariana. Not necessarily whose side are you on, this team or that team. I know I said that because it's being fun for, for what we're doing. But but do you see both sides or whose sides do you see more or, or what do you think is really going on between these two women? So put it down below and be sure to like, subscribe, and share. So with that, let's move on to... Ariana versus Sheena. Now, is this the relationship slash friendship that we ever thought we would see come crumbling down? And again, this might be, this might be, let me see. Okay. This might be an unpopular opinion because I'm seeing so many people 
Sheena bashing on social media. Oh, Sheena Shea is Sheena-ing. She's making everything about her. I have a very different opinion about this. Like, I know Sheena can be a lot of things, but I have a lot of empathy for what she's going through. Now, when it comes to Sheena and Brock, I have a whole lot of thoughts on that. That's for a whole different video. But when it comes to Sheena and the Lala situation, or, or Sheena and the Ariana situation, again, I don't think Sheena is jealous of Ariana. And, I, and I've said it before, but I think it's very lazy work to just say that she's jealous of her and that's why she's feeling some type of way. To me, that, that's not actually using our emotional intelligence and nuance and understanding levels to friendships. I don't think that Sheena is jealous of Ariana. This isn't jealousy. This is something else. So let's read and then we'll and then we'll dive in. So this is from People Magazine. Sheena admits to feeling not valid as she learns Ariana is living her Dance to Make the Stars dream. I'm afraid to express how I feel because it's not about me. It's never been about me. It's only about her. So I'm struggling with having any conversation with her lately, Sheena says of Ariana. Sheena Shea knows her friendship with Ariana Maddox has changed amid the fallout of Scandaval. In a preview for next week's episode of Vanderpump Rules, the good as gold singer tells Lisa Vanderpump that she'd had the most emotionally draining day while grappling with forgiving Ariana's ex Tom Sandoval for his affair with Raquel Rachel Levis. I cried, I cried so much my eyelashes were dry and hurt, she admits. I'm going through the stages of grief with Sandoval. What do you mean grief? Or what or what you have, Lisa 63, asked Sheena, who responds, Yes, of that friendship. So Sheena saying she's grieving the loss of the friendship she had with Tom Sandoval. When Lisa asks if she's worried that Ariana 38 will be upset if she befriends Scandival, Sandoval again, she responds, it's just hard when I try to tell her how I'm feeling when it comes to Sandoval. She literally said, I don't want to hear about it. The reality star admits that she no longer feels she can talk openly with Ariana, saying in a confessional, I've done everything I can to be ride or die for her, but is, but is it not enough still? I'm afraid to express how I feel because it's not about me. It's never been about me. It's only about her. So I've been struggling with having any conversations with her lately because I feel like I'm not valid in my feelings. Sheena admits that she has mixed emotions about Ariana getting new opportunities since Scandaval blew up, including joining the cast of Dancing with the Stars. A few weeks ago, I picked up Dan at the airport, she tells Lisa, referencing Ariana's boyfriend, Daniel Way. We grabbed lunch and he was like, oh, the announcement on Wednesday, Ariana had to stay in town, so I flew in because she can't come to New York. And I go, what announcement? He goes, Dancing with the Stars. And I was like, oh. Oh, my God, Lisa responds before pointing out, when I did Dance to Make the Stars, you said to me, that's what I want more than anything. Sheena says she was gearing up for the opportunity herself, uh, herself should producers call her. This year, I started taking dance class. I was preparing in case, you know, I did get it, she says. I'm so happy for her, but it's like I can be happy for her and sad for me at the same time. She calls the casting news kind of a punch in the gut before sarcastically adding, and good for her. I mean, she has come such a long way from being my backup dancer. Lisa encourages her to discuss how she's feeling with Ariana, but Sheena insists Ariana shuts me down. All I want for Sheena is to, at some point, be able to say exactly what she's thinking, Lisa says in a confessional. There is always that push and pull and her trying to make everybody happy, but it's okay to say, you know what? It really hurt my feelings. What's wrong with that? Okay, now we're going to get into this. We're going to get into this. Okay, now a couple of things. Number one, Ariana needs to humble herself. And when I say humble herself, I don't mean kiss anybody's butt or dim her shine or not take opportunities that come her way. That's not what I mean. Because humility is not about being a doormat. Humility is not about um, dimming your light or your shine to make other pe people feel more comfortable. That's not, humility is having grace and gratitude and um, what word am I looking for? I guess like discernment and empathy 
when it comes to other people as well. Do you know what I'm saying? Like that's really what humility is. It's 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 it's, it's owning your power with grace. To me, that's what being humble is. You know, it's like, yes, I'm blessed. Yes, I have all of these things, but I'm taking it with grace. That to me is more of what humility it is. So when I say that Ariana needs to humble herself, I'm not saying she needs to dim her shine. I would never tell any other human to do that. No, you shine as bright as you can, like the star that God made you. Do it, right? But you do it with grace and you do it with deference to other people as well, to other people's emotions. And I think where Ariana is missing the mark is that she is trying to enforce this loyalty to her. You know, you're either with me or you're not with me with people that she's not so sowing that same level of loyalty and that same level of thoughtfulness to like she wants everybody to <laughs> shout out to um <laughs> the real housewives of um oh what which real housewives is it? i can't remember it it's like sydney or seshire or one of them where she's like where gina's like everybody anyway i'm getting sidetracked anyway so Ariana wants everybody to defer to her feelings, to her emotions, to what she needs, to be to be thoughtful of what she's going through, of what Tom did to her. And you need to ride with me. And if you don't ride with me, then you're dead to me, right? She's wanting this blind loyalty from people that she's treating like crap. Don't expect me to ride into the dawn with you when you're not riding into the dawn with me. Hell no. If, I, if I'm if i being loyal to you, you're sure as hell going to be loyal to me because this is a two-way street, boo-boo. It's not a one-way street. It's a two-way street. And that's where Ariana is falling flat. You know, that's where she's really falling flat because she knew how much Dancing with the Stars meant to Sheena. Everybody knew how much it meant to Sheena. Come on now. So when she got Dancing with the Stars, she should have given her the heads up. If she's supposed to be her friend, she's supposed to be her best friend, especially somebody you're expecting blind loyalty from, you're not going to give them the heads up. It's like Sheena said, she's like, I'm learning all of these things on Instagram. Like I'm a fan like everybody else. And then Ariana, you got caught in a big lie. And this is a thing. It's like, don't play in our faces like we're stupid. We know how things work, sweetheart. Ariana's like, well, I had an ironclad NDA and I couldn't tell anybody. Excuse me, miss. You were posting about it on your Instagram, about, uh, about like getting Chicago and everything else. And then also Dan, your boyfriend, knew about it. He was the one who told Sheena. So... If you had the ability to post about or, uh, your opportunities on Instagram, if you had the ability to tell your boyfriend, you had the ability to tell Sheena. I'm not saying break your NDA, but you clearly were, the NDA was clearly over and void and you were allowed to publicly talk about it since you were publicly talking about it. So what Sheena is saying, I'm happy for you but you're not treating me like I'm your friend. You're treating me like I either need to, like I'm a fan and like I'm your soldier, but you're not treating me like a friend, but you expect me to treat you like the, the queen of the world and be blindly loyal to you. That's where I think the real disconnect is. And I don't think that's jealousy at all. I don't think that Sheena is jealous that she got it. I think Sheena is feeling like, well, wait a minute. I feel some type of way because you're treating me like I'm just another chick on the street, but yet you're asking me to like follow you to the end of the earth and give up a 15 year friendship. Also, I think a big um, factor is this also did happen to Sheena in the sense of, to be honest with you, Sheena got the brunt of this even more than Ariana, to be honest, because Ariana stopped lying, girl. You knew your relationship was trash. You knew it was trash. You knew that it was one leg out the door, one leg in the door. You knew you guys weren't sleeping together. You were fighting. You know, he was never home. And as you said at the reunion, you, he would tell you what to say to keep your story straight. And you were totally fine with that. Now, I say that, but I don't, but I'm not saying that it was okay for him to cheat on her. That's not what I'm saying. If you were in an unhappy relationship, you end the relationship 
you don't cheat on someone and make a fool of them, especially with somebody who's claiming to be their friend. I'm not saying that at all. But Ariana needs to stop acting like she was left at the altar by this man. You weren't left at the altar. Come on now, girl, get with it. Um, but what happened, and you're getting all of these opportunities, which is great. Do you know, I'm not saying that she wasn't hurt by it, but I, Ariana, like she said on the show, she had $2,000 left in her bank account. And I believe her. I think she probably was. You know, it's honestly kind of scary how many of these people, particularly on Vanderpump Rules, and I'm sure other reality stars, are so broke. Like they, like Tom was saying he was broke. He had to go tour. Uh, Schwartz was saying he was broke. Ariana said she had 2K left. You know, she was saying she was broke until Scandal. You know, all, and Sheena was saying how when she was pregnant, which was maybe like, what, three years ago? During um, COVID, she said she was broke, didn't have any money coming in. Now, now Sheena, side note, because now I'm going to talk to Sheena real quick. Sheena, 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 girl. What the hell are you doing with Brock? Ain't no way I'm going to be pregnant with a full grown man's baby. And I am so broke with zero money coming in that I'm going to need Tom Sandoval to cash at me a couple of grand to stay afloat. What the hell is Brock doing? What is Brock doing? Because Sheena said she was pregnant. Her podcast at that time had gotten canceled and she didn't have any money coming in. What was what is what is Brock doing? The man who put that baby in your belly, the man who was living with you. What is he doing? Sheena, do better. But Sheena, this is your fault because you knew who you got with. You knew that this was a man who had no problem, no problem deserting his own children. And if a man will desert his own children, he will sure as hell desert you. And in my personal opinion, Sheena, girl, you in danger. And we've been seeing how Brock talks to you this entire time. I got my own speculations about Brock and his little friend Oshin over on Southern Hospitality and how Brock is now wearing very, very high heels. Brock's heels are higher than mine. I'm not talking about, I'm not being shady when it comes to anybody's sexuality. It's not my place to speculate. But if you put it out there, I'm going to talk about it because you're you're the person putting it out there. But with respect, we know how we roll here. Everybody, we're inclusive here. We will shade everybody equally because everybody's equal. Sheena, girl, you don't messed up. Ah, you should have watched my videos. Brock doesn't like you, boo-boo. Brock saw you as a cash cow come up. Anytime a man slides into your DMs as a fan... Anytime a man is willing to desert his own children, anytime a man is willing to take your money to fund an app, you got a problem. That's why his name is not on the deed of the new house you got. Because I don't think y'all going to make it very much longer. And I don't even think he cares because I think the moment he makes a little cute coin, he's going to be out. Because he used his connection to you with Bravo, with NBC, with being on the show, because Sheena was on, I think she was either on Watch Happens Live or Juicy Scoop with Heather McDonald. She was on some show talking about how, or maybe it was Jeff Lewis, maybe it was Jeff Lewis, talking about how, you know, Brock is like selling TV shows about like rugby or something. And I might, I'm like, Brock only has these opportunities because he's with you. I don't think that Brock would be able to pitch TV shows, you know, if he hadn't already been on Bravo and NBC and all that stuff. And he just only saw you as a cash cow and a come up. Sheena, before you lay down and got pregnant with this man, before you married this man, you should have done some deep, deep, deep therapy. And you should have learned to love yourself first. That's why you are in one-sided marriages that's why you are in one-sided friendships. You know, one-sided friendship with Sandoval. I, to be honest with you, the saddest part is I actually think Tom Sandoval out of Ariana and Brock and Tom, I actually think Tom is the kindest to Sheena out of her so-called best friend Ariana and out of her so-called deadbeat husband Brock. To be honest with you, Tom Sandoval, I think is 
better to Sheena than all of them. I know, and I'm 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 gonna compartmentalize this because people have moments. I know what he did with the restraining order was horrible. I know what he did when he told her, oh, you're fake and we didn't have a friendship and you punched Rachel. I know that situation was horrible and dead wrong. I know that. I'm talking about in totality. In totality. That's why I think Sheena is having such a hard time letting the friendship with Tom go because I do think in totality, Sandoval is actually a better friend to Sheena than Ariana is and is a better friend to her than her own husband is. That's kind of where I land on that. And I think that's really, really sad. Really, 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 really sad. But Sheena, you knew who you were married, who you were marrying, and you made every excuse for him. And he's just treating you how he treats everybody because you knew who he was. All right, that was a complete tangent. Let's get back to Sheena versus Ariana. So yes, again, I don't think it's jealousy. I think it's more of a, and I also think Sheena is scared to really go against Ariana because of backlash. You know, all Sheena is saying is, listen, like you're treating me like I'm a fan. You're not being honest with me. And like, I'm mourning the loss of the friendship. And also don't forget, oh, also humility when it comes to Ariana. We can't forget how this all started. Ariana was. Sheena's backup dancer slash friend who thought she was better than reality TV because everybody on the show wanted to be actors, all of them. They were all actor models, right? Every single person on the show wanted to be an actor, including Ariana. She thought that if I'm on a reality show, I won't be taken seriously as an actor. So I don't want to be on this show. And it was like pulling teeth with her to get her on the show to do anything. She would kind of like put her hair over her face because she didn't want to be on a reality show. Don't. But Sheena was the one who was like, you need to come on, be on the show. You know, get you don't have any money. Let's get you a check. Like, let's get you on the show. Sheena was really her champion. Also, don't forget, Sheena and Tom Sandoval were friends before Sheena even ever met Ariana. They were friends first. Before the show, Sheena and Tom were working at either, I think it was Villa Blanca in Bev Hills. So they were working together for about a year before the show, and they were really good friends before the show. And then when the show started, Tom was the only person who was really nice to Sheena because Stassi didn't like her because Stassi had her own issues. And then Kristen and Katie would just follow whatever Stassi said. And Tom at the upfront was like, no, Sheena, you're a part of the cast. Come get into their photos and like bring her in, you know. And so I think for everything Sheena has, she clearly has low self-esteem. And I think that Tom, you know, he isn't perfect, but I do think that he likes to sort of, you know, align himself with the underdog because that's how he feels important. But it's still a nice thing to do. They had a very good close friendship for a long time. And no, I don't think that Sheena's in love with Tom or anything happened between them. Those other stupid conspiracies out there. I don't think that's true either. And Sheena was the one who introduced Ariana and Tom together, introduced them together. So Sheena has done a lot for Ariana. Let's be very clear. She introduced her to Tom and she got her on the show, got her a little check, got her a little come up. Because to be honest with you, Ariana's boring. She's boring. Even in this season of Scandaval, she's boring. And I I implore anybody to tell me that Ariana isn't boring as hell. What What does Ariana got going on? She's boring. This whole, I'm cool, I'm such a cool girl. You're not that cool, sweet, sweet stuff. You're not, you're not that cool. You're not the cool. And I don't, and before the weirdos come out, I don't hate her. I don't dislike her. I don't know her at all. I'm just giving my opinion on the personas and personalities that they portray on a reality TV show. This isn't personal. This isn't anything like that. I don't hate anybody. So before the weirdos come out accusing me of hating somebody, let's be clear, put on our, you know, emotional intelligent hats on. I don't hate anybody. I'm just saying. She's boring. She's boring to me. So I do think that when it comes to Ariana versus Sheena, I don't think Sheena is jealous. I think Sheena is just sort of like, 
just like she said, I've never been, it's never been about me. I've never had a season where I was the, the, the queen of the season where I got the great edit. It's never really been about me. I'm warning a lot of stuff. I have stuff going on too. And this was an opportunity that like I really wanted and I didn't get it. And my supposedly best friend couldn't be bothered to even tell me about it. Oh, and that's the lie. I think I said it before, but with Ariana using the excuse of an NDA, that doesn't fly, sweetheart. Because when Sheena said she she found out, um, not she found about Dancing with the Stars from Daniel. So if Ariana could tell Daniel, she could tell Sheena. And it was another opportunity because Ariana's had so much stuff, but there was another one where they were, she was finding out on Instagram. If you can post it on Instagram, you can call your friend and tell them. And I feel the same way. Obviously on a different scale, but like if somebody that I know and I'm like quote friends with and I find out that you are in to me, if I find out that you are engaged, broken up or pregnant on social media, we are not friends. And to me, that's kind of synonymous to it because I'm not a famous person, you know? So it's like my friends are and I'm like dance with the stars. You know what I'm saying? So it's like yet <laughs> manifest it. Anyway, so that to me is like the analogy that I would use for it. You know, if 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 I'm in a, gr a friend, a group of girl friends, and I found out that you get engaged from your Instagram post, not from the group chat, not from a personal text, we're not friends. We're associates. <laughs> okay, don't get it twisted. People go around using that friend word throwing it around. To me, a friend is a friend is a friend. If I find out, if I find out any big life event on social media, we are acquaintances. We are not friends. I need to know, I need to find out about the breakup, the baby, the ring in the group chat or else we ain't friends. And that's just what it is. And that's basically what we're in my mind. That's really what, where Sheena is coming from. And that's her struggle where she's like, I can't talk about what I'm going through. I can't talk about how this has affected me. I can't talk about grieving my friend that I knew before you, who I introduced you to, any of that, because you are the only person in this situation who's allowed to mourn. You are the only person in this situation who's allowed to be hurt. And if I just don't go, and if I just don't do what you say, how you want me to do it, then all of a sudden I'm the bad person. You know, I am, you know, flip-flop Sheena, I'm this, I'm that, I'm stupid to go back to him, blah, 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 blah. So in this situation, I'm on Sheena's side because you're not going to expect blind loyalty from me when you're treating me like another chick. Not going to happen. But I want to know what you guys think, you know? Um, I want to know what you guys think. What do you think about this? You know, everybody's saying Sheena's jealous. I don't think it's jealousy. Um, and what do you think about Ariana expecting everybody to kiss her, to bow to her, but she's not showing that same type of love to them. And also let's not forget, you know, how Ariana said that she's not really close to these chicks on her, the call her daddy podcast. She was like, they're not like my inner circle. I don't really know them like that. And to be honest, Ariana has never really been a girl's girl. She's never really been down with the girls. I think she tolerates Sheena, but she's never been a true friend to Sheena. When? I'll wait. <laughs> but as always, be sure to put it down below and be sure to like, subscribe, and share. So with that, let's see. Dun, dun, dun. I'm going to drink a little bit of tea. I don't want my throat to give out. I want to go as long as I can. Okay, let's see. Let's do Ariana versus Katie. Now, this is a lot. <laughs> let's do Ariana versus Katie. So this one isn't so much like Ariana versus Katie, but more of what's going on with the situation with their sandwich shop, something about her. And I'm going to basically say where I think Katie Maloney went really, really wrong. 
you know, but let's, I'll, I'll break it down where I think Katie did a huge misstep. We'll get into it. So this is from the U.S. Sun. It says, bad sign. Ariana Maddox and Katie Maloney sandwich shop signs and front patio all taken down as opening date now on hold. The Vanderpump Rule stars are focused are, are forced to redo their entire front patio after new city limits were put in place. Yeesh. Mm-mm-mm. Sorry, I had, I had to breathe. Okay. Something about her opening date has been put on pause, as the U.S. Sun reported, due to ongoing health department issues and Ariana's commitment to performing on Broadway in New York City for the next few months. Okay. We don't even really need to read the rest of the article, but we will. <laughs> but if you guys have your candy cane critical thinking hats on, does this sentence make sense to you? Something about her opening date has been put on pause as the U.S. Sun reported due to ongoing health department issues and Ariana's commitment to performing on Broadway in New York City for the next few months. One of these things are not like the other. Let's read between the lines. Why would something about her opening date have to be put on pause simply because Ariana is performing on Broadway? That doesn't make any sense. Pretty sure Katie could oversee the design and the food and, you know, the inspections and everything like that, you know, with Ariana weighing in here and there because this has always been Katie's baby. Always been Katie's baby. It's also saying due to ongoing health department issues. Now, I think the real issue is... Ariana doesn't want to do it anymore. And they're using the excuse of ongoing health department issues and permits and all of this stuff. Because why would you put in the same sentence, ongoing health department issues and Ariana dancing on Broadway? Doesn't make any sense to me. To me, this is like a cover up. It's like we're trying to conflate two different things because I'm pretty sure that a lot of people own restaurants. Like, look, like for example, Lisa Vanderpump. She owns Pump. She did own Villa, Bon Villa Banca. You know, Sir. She was on Dancing with the Stars. She was on, you know, by uh, Beverly Hills. She didn't put everything on hold because she had to go do a show. No, she had every everybody around her do it. This doesn't make any sense. But let's keep going. Now, another major problem has come to the forefront, a makeover of the entire front patio of Ariana and Katie's West Hollywood Cafe. Back in June, the U.S. Sun obtained photos of what the exterior of Something About Her looked like at the time. There was a Something About Her sign, a yellow and white awning, and a square-shaped patio for outdoor dining that was situated in the front of the store. The U.S. Sun has learned why the patio and sign had to be taken down after appearing ready to be open. The front patio at that location was there for years when it was Headley's restaurant, and it was there without proper city permits, a source told the U.S. Sun. After the remodeling, Katie and Ariana learned that permit laws had changed and that they had to take down their sign and break down their entire front patio. Now, what's seen in the photos obtained by the Sun is an empty sidewalk in front of something about her with the sign and awning no longer there. As of December, the Vanderpump Rules stars had to file a new permit with the city of West Hollywood, proposing a different outdoor dining area and a new canopy that's permissible within limits, as indicated by signage on the front door. The drawings that were submitted for the new outdoor dining space don't look the same as it was before the source revealed. They're not giving up hope since the outdoor dining area would be beneficial to the business and will allow for more seating, for more seating space. What's taking time? Aside from the exterior, there are other issues that have to be resolved before opening. For one, the flooring needs a whole new makeover. Blah, 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 blah. It goes into like the health department said that the floor is not open. So now all of a sudden after spending 300K on a build out, they have to redo everything is what apparently is going on. The source continued, it's a cluster F. It's a lot of black back and forth with city officials. Taking over this location has been bad luck from the beginning. It's like it's been jinxed because it's always something new. 
Mm -hmm. Then it goes in to talk about, you know, what's going on. It has some interior photos. I mean, the inside looks really, really cute and everything. Anticipating opening, the process of getting something about her to open all began as far back as July 2021 when an LLC was filed. Bravo fans have been eager to visit the shop, especially after getting a sneak peek of it on last season of Vanderpump Rules. Co-stars Lala Kent, Tom Schwartz, and Shana Shea have all gotten a bite of the tasting menu. Okay. This is the thing. Don't piss on my leg and tell me it's raining, Okay. <laughs> Don't piss on my leg and tell me it's raining. Again, why would the article then go on to talk about permits and signage and LLCs and the waiting on the waiting on the city and tasting menus and all of that stuff? Why would the article go on to talk about all of that? But in that very first sentence, like I said, why would it bring up Ariana's commitment to performing on Broadway in New York City for the next few months? Why include that sentence at all, unless that was the actual reason? Word on the street is this. Something about her is basically Shorts and Sandy's part two. Ariana being Sandoval and Katie being Schwartz. This is where I think Katie went wrong. Partnering with Ariana in the first place. Katie, Ariana don't like you, boo-boo. She don't like you. She don't. Ariana was mean to Katie, standoffish to Katie, not nice to Katie. All under the guise of, well, Tom, Tom doesn't like her. I can never get close to her and blah, blah, blah. She'd be like fake nice to her, but we all knew she didn't really like her. We would see what she said in confessionals. You know, we would see how they treated her because she would because she was with Tom. Tom didn't like Lala. She was mean to Lala. Tom didn't like Katie. She was mean to Katie. But she was nice to uh, what's her face? Rachel, because Tom liked Rachel. Where did that get you? Never go into business. I'm not saying you have to be friends, but sure as hell don't be enemies. Never go into business with someone that you know doesn't like you. I don't know if Katie just missed the memo. I don't know if it went over Katie's head. I don't know if Katie stopped watching the damn show. But why would you go into business with someone who doesn't like you? And if you do happen to go into business with somebody who doesn't like you, and then you see season nine or season eight, whichever season it was, season eight or season nine, when Katie and Ariana were supposed to meet with Randall. This was before Randall got exposed for all of his shenanigans. This was before Randall um, and, and Lala split. This was during the time when Randall was still making the money and was, you know, the connector guy. This was when he was in his heyday. Go back and watch when they were supposed to meet with Randall because they were gonna, they were pitching him the idea to see if he would be an investor in something about her. And when Katie got to the meeting, and Ariana was a no show, she ended up showing up later, but she was really late. It looked, it was extremely unprofessional, and it was extremely disrespectful, not just to Randall, but to Katie. If I'm with my business partner and we have a meeting with an investor and my business partner shows up late with an attitude like I'm better than this because all of a sudden Tom Sandoval had to have her sign some papers about refinancing their home mortgage. Wonder how that turned out for you, Ariana. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then Ariana in the confessional again was so nasty and was like, yeah, well, now I only pay this much every month in mortgage or some of that. <laughs> Not like, oh my gosh, like I'm so embarrassed. I feel bad. I should have, you know, told Tom to reschedule. I should have shown up on time. You know, I feel really bad for making Katie wait because, you know, wh what I do looks bad for us. She had that nasty attitude. I don't know if Katie didn't watch that episode or what. But the moment I saw that, I was like, that shop will never open and it's doomed. Because that is a huge disrespect 
and lack of just regard for someone that you are about to embark on a very huge endeavor with. Opening up a restaurant is a huge endeavor, huge. And you have that kind of smug, nasty attitude. That told me everything I needed to know. And I was like, it's doomed. And you guys remember, I did a whole video on it. I said five times um, Ariana betrayed Katie is something about her doomed. It's on my YouTube channel. Just, just um, type in the search. Something about her doomed, Candy Washington, Lala, or Ariana, Katie. It'll pop up. I predicted it. So Katie's number one misstep, don't ever go into business with somebody who doesn't like you. And to quote Maya Angelou, when people show you who they are, believe you. If it were me and I had already gone in business with Ariana and she showed up late for an investor meeting with that nasty condescending attitude, and then I saw that confessional, I would have dissolved the partnership right then and there. I either would have continued. Katie should have done one of two things. She should have done the, 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 the sandwich shop on her own and figure it out how to fi- do it by herself. There's a lot of people who go who have investors and board members, but they do it on their own. Or I would have found a different partner. I would not have partnered with her. I would not have partnered with her because it's not just about disrespecting the investor. You're disrespecting me and you are showing me exactly how you feel about me. And what I don't play with is my time and my money. Forget the little friendship crap. Don't 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 mess with my time and don't mess with my money. I would have dissolved it right then and there. And the reason why I think Katie and Ariana are so close this season is one, I think Katie now realizes holy crap. I am partnering with someone who doesn't care about the business and who doesn't care about me. One second, you guys. I'm trying to hang. I'm trying to hang. All right. I think Katie is fearful of losing the business altogether. And what is that? uh, Oh, my gosh, you guys. What is that theorem or principle or philosophy? It's, It's something some where it's like, you have the false, it's a fallacy where you have the false belief that I've invested so much that I can't get out now that you just keep digging yourself deeper and deeper and deeper when the reality is it's better to cut bait and just cut your losses now than keep digging yourself deeper and deeper into the hole. I can't think of it. It's like something, some, it's some theorem or some philosophy. But that's where I think Katie is. I think Katie is scared to cut bait. But I think that's what she needs to do. Because like this article basically told us without telling us, something about her is not opening because Ariana is booked and busy. Why would they add that one sentence to this article that she's off performing in Broadway and then talk about permits and licenses and LLCs and this, that, and the third and awnings? Why would you add that at all? Wouldn't you just say, Something about her delayed because of city permits. Why would you even add that part? They didn't say because Katie, because Katie is out here doing, you know, emo nights and concerts. <laughs> they didn't talk about that. You know what I mean? Because Katie is out here with fake lesbian story and storylines. They didn't say anything like that. It told us what it needed to tell us without out coming out and saying it. Katie, you in danger. Another reason why I think Katie and Ariana are close is because, and again, this is where Katie is making a huge mistake. Katie is staying loyal to Ariana with the Scandival thing. Yes, because of how Tom did her, did Ariana, but I think more so because of how Tom has always done her. So the reason why I think Katie gets so mad at Sheena for wanting to be friends with Tom is because of how dirty Tom has done her. And to be honest with you, this might be an unpopular opinion, but it's just how I feel. I think Tom Sandoval has done Katie Maloney way dirtier than he did Ariana. I don't care. Not that I don't care he cheated on her. I don't mean it that way. I get he cheated on her. 
I get it was with Rachel, but I think in totality of the, at this point, Katie was, was with Tom Schwartz for 12 years. They've been 12 to 14 years, right? Because they've known each other since they're all like late thirties, early forties, and they've known each other since that, since they were in their twenties. So this is over, oh, well over a decade of Tom Sandoval being so dismissive and gaslighting and mean and divisive when it comes to Katie. I get it. Katie is an acquired taste, you know, but I do think the way that Tom has poisoned people against her, talked bad about her, inserted himself in her relationship with Shorts, in her marriage to Shorts, has been disgusting and despicable. And the way that he tr has treated Katie systematically for years and methodically for years, I understand why Katie is 10 toes down on hating him. And I think her hatred for him is more rooted in what he's done to her and to her relationship and marriage with Tom Shorts. So I think that's why Katie is so aligned with Ariana. Not so much because her and Ariana are really deep friends, but right now they have a lot of mutually invested interest. The future of something about her and the deep-seated hatred of Tom Sandoval. So it's almost like... um. It's like that Cardi B song, you know, this B hate me and this B hate me. And sometimes they link up and they become friends. Like to me, that's Ariana and Katie. They both hate Sandoval. So they linked up to became friends. You see what I'm saying? Like that's kind of what it is. It's the mutual hatred for him. But I think Katie's hatred is more steeped into what he did to her. And I, and I thought the last episode... <sighs> I felt really bad for Katie because I feel like she hasn't healed yet in a place to receive Tom's apology. And I, I that made me feel really bad because I have my issues with Sandoval. We get it. He's a narcissist. He's blah, blah, blah. We've talked about it ad nauseum. We get it. This is not me defending Tom by any means. But when Tom came in the room and he was trying to apologize to Katie about, you know, inserting himself in the divorce and all of that stuff, I could see that Katie, the wound is still so fresh for her that she couldn't even let herself. And even when she was on Wap Shoppin's Live, like, apologies is its words. I need actions. Like, stop with the nonsense. Anybody with emotional intelligence knows that words are meaningful and powerful. And for someone to say, I did this to you and it was wrong and I'm sorry, is extremely powerful. Again, I'm not talking about when people just do it performatively, like, oh my God, I'm so sorry I cheated on you. I'm going to cheat on you again. I'm sorry. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about like actual vulnerability in communication with someone. But I think that Katie is still so hurt by it. And I understand it I because she hasn't, this would be the first step in her healing anything with Tom Sandoval. So I get it. She couldn't even allow herself to go there with him that she that she had to deflect. And the way she did that was when he was like, I wanted to apologize to you. You know, we are going through, through the divorce. We didn't need the extra stuff. I think that hit her so hard. She couldn't let herself go there. So she started to, well, you know, well, what you did to Ariana and like you shouldn't be having parties here and what you did to her and you need to show her more respect. She couldn't sit in it. She couldn't sit in her own discomfort and hurt and need for his, for his apology. She couldn't actually let herself sit in it because I think it would have hurt too much. So instead she deflected from it because that moment should not have been about Ariana at all. It should have been about Katie receiving Tom's apology. But I think she's still so in the hurt of it, which makes sense because if this is the first time he's coming to her and saying he's sorry, it's on camera, it's unexpected. She doesn't have that resolve with him. I get that, you know, I'm not expecting her to be completely evolved in that moment. I get it. I think it's a very 
natural response for where she's at. But that moment should have been about her saying to Tom, thank you for that apology because this is how you hurt me. But I don't think she was ready for it. And so instead of sitting in with him, she deflected to, oh, you're you're throwing parties with random with Ariana and this is just words. And to me, it just was more indicative of not Katie being bitter, not her being miserable, not her being mean. To me, it's more of Katie being still in a lot of hurt. I saw a very sad, hurt person. And again, when we talk about women archetypes, because Katie has a mouth, because Katie stands up for herself, because she has a certain disposition, a lot of times people don't see her hurt as hurt. They see it as bitter. They see it as, they don't see her sad. They see it as miserable because she's a certain type of woman. Pretty sure if she was like, oh my God, blah, 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 type of, you know, docile woman, it would be like, oh my God, she's so hurt. She's so sad because that's palpable, right? We live, we still live in a patriarchal system where certain type of women, their pain is perceived in a certain type of way. So I saw Katie not as bitter and miserable. I saw her as a woman in a lot of pain. That's really what I saw. And I, and I, and I see a woman still mourning the loss of her marriage. That's really what I saw. And so I felt really bad for her because I think that that's a lot of pain to work through and resolve. But this is another reason why, but, it, but here's another reason why Katie is misstepping with aligning with Ariana. Who was the person that said to Tom Sandoval, what you did to Katie was wrong and you need to apologize to her? Who said that to Tom? I'll wait. Was it Tom Schwartz, her ex-husband? Eh. Was it Ariana, her new best friend and business partner? Eh. Was it Lala, warrior woman? Eh. It was Sheena. Sheena was the one who went to Tom and said, the way you've treated Katie is messed up. And you need to go and make it right and apologize to her. Sheena was the one who said that to Tom. And that's when Tom got his stuff together and actually apologized to her. Do I believe a lot of what comes out of Sandoval's mouth? No. But I do think that for him, his personality type, I'm not a doctor, I don't diagnose, whatever personality type he is, I do think for his capability, because people have differing emotional capabilities, I think for his emotional capability, this might be an unpopular opinion, but I believed him. And I do think for his capacity, he was being genuine when he said that. I do. I believed him. I don't believe a lot of his crocodile tears. I don't believe a lot of his performative stuff. I don't believe a lot of his hypocrisy and deflection and narcissism. But I'm not a person that's just going to say I think everything out of his mouth is a lie. That's not true. People have different layers and people are different at different times. I actually believe that he was being genuine to what his capacity is being genuine is. But the person who made that happen was Sheena. But Katie will, you know, dismiss and, you know, shade Sheena all day long. And while she's kissing Ariana's butt all day long, when has Ariana had your back ever in life, Katie? I'll wait. Not with something about her. That doesn't look like that's going to open to me. When did Ariana ever say, hey, Tom, lay off a of Katie? I'll wait. It was Sheena. It was Sheena. So, mm -mm 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 -mm. I think with this situation, Katie, it's just time to cut bait. I think you either need to, either way, I think you need to dissolve the partnership and either go at it yourself or find a new partner. But I don't think it's going to work out with you and Ariana. Because this article told us everything we needed to know without, without saying it. 
So your store doesn't look like it's opening anytime soon. Anytime soon. And Katie, wake up. Ariana doesn't like you. Okay? You would be you would do far better linking up with 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 um flip flop Sheena. <laughs> I mean, Sheena gets a bad rap. I actually like Sheena. I, I there's some times where I think she's been messy, particularly with Brock. But I do think Sheena overall, this is the thing. I think, you know what it is about Sheena? I think Sheena has a good heart. And I do think that Sheena is one of the most transparent people on the show. Even when she's like, I don't even think she's so much a flip-flopper. I think it's more of like a people-pleasing out of lack of self-esteem and a lack of self-worth. Because when you're a people pleaser, it's usually because you don't have enough confidence in yourself to think that you're allowed to create boundaries with people. Some people use people pleasing in a manipulative way. Tom Shorts, I'm looking at you. But some people people please in a way because they lack self-esteem. And I think that's more Sheena. I think Sheena doesn't have a lot of self-worth and a lot of self-esteem. And so it comes across as being a flip-flopper, but I think it's really her way of, of belonging because she feels like she's never really belonged, if that makes sense. So my heart goes out to Katie and Sheena, Ariana. You just got to fix your attitude. Nobody is jealous of you, Ariana. You, I think everybody is genuinely happy for you. I think Katie's happy for her. I think I think Sheena and Lala, I think they're happy for her. You can be happy for someone and still want to check them for how they're moving. Doesn't mean you're jealous of them. But a lot of times people who are moving a type of way will say you're jealous of me because they don't want to admit that they're moving kind of grimy. See what I'm saying? So that's just kind of how I feel about it. So I want to know what you guys think. You know, put it down below. What Do you think something about her is ever going to open? Do you think it's not going to open? Do you think Ariana is really Katie's friend? What do you think is going on? Do you think Ariana and Shorts will get back together? Not Ariana and Shorts. Do you think Katie and Shorts will ever get back together? Do you think Katie and Tom Sandoval will ever make up? Put it down below. And as always, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. So with that, let's move on to Ariana versus Rachel. And then take a quick sip of some tea. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's go on. All right. So Rachel Levis, as we all know, in my personal opinion, the chick is just, she's pissing me off. Rachel, you're, 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 oh wait, hold on. Rachel, you're pissing me off. Because in my opinion, I do think she is filing a frivolous lawsuit against Ariana and NBC and Bravo. And ugh, this might be an unpopular opinion, but I think it's even frivolous against Tom at this, at this point in time. She's saying that, oh, you know, uh, um, Tom invaded my privacy and Ariana did revenge corn. And then she had this whole theory in her legal document. And Rachel, I don't know who your lawyers are, but they need to do their due diligence because I caught you in a lie. I caught you in a lie. And I'm going to show and I'm going to play. I'm going to play the, the receipts because, you know, if I say that I'm coming with some receipts. Rachel, you got caught in a lie. See, this is why people shouldn't do podcasts or interviews unless they have their lies ironclad tight. Ariana, if you're listening, call your lawyers because Rachel lying. And we got the receipts. Now, just as a quick overall in Rachel's lawsuit, she's claiming that Ariana and Tom were in on the whole thing, the whole affair, and that Ariana knew about it and she wanted them to keep it quiet until season 11 so then they could film it and it would be all for the show and that they all orchestrated Scandal together. That's what she's claiming in the lawsuit. Ariana knew. 
and they all planned it for Scandival and they all exploited her. You know, Ariana distributed the little FaceTime sexy time video that Tom took without her consent, blah, 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 all of that stuff. Okay. Now I already said that don't make any sense. None of that makes any sense because number one, do I think Tom filmed her without her consent? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe he did. Maybe he didn't on that one. I don't know if he did, then just go after him for invading your privacy you know, do your little small claims court. I don't know what you got to do, whatever girl, but go after him. When she said that Ariana knew and that everybody knew, and it was supposed to be a storyline for season 11, I said, that doesn't make any sense. That just sounds like a straight up lie because number one, if that was true, then why did skin have all break when they weren't filming? Remember they had stopped filming. <laughs> The season had wrapped. That's why they had to pick the cameras back up to capture everything that was going on. If Ariana and Tom and all these people knew about it and it was and it was supposed to be a storyline for season 11, then why did the story break when they weren't actually filming? That doesn't make any sense. Also, what doesn't make any sense, if Ariana knew, Ariana knew, then why would Sheena, the way that Rachel tells it, why would Sheena punch her in her face over something that Ariana already knew? That doesn't make any sense either. Again, I don't think Sheena pushed her. Maybe she mushed her, pushed her, whatever the hell it was. I don't think she like punched her in her face, whatever it was. Why would Sheena have that reaction if Ariana already knew? Also, if Ariana already knew, why would she have to then take the video and send it to Sheena or send it to herself if she already knew? Again, doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense at all. Also, if Ariana already knew and this was just a plan for season 11, why didn't you say that from jump? Why didn't you say that when the cameras picked back up? Why didn't you say that in any of your interviews? Why didn't you say that at the reunion? I'm confused. Why didn't you say that way before? Why would you wait almost a year later when season 11 starts airing to say that they knew about it? Wouldn't the first thing out of your mouth when this entire thing happened, wouldn't you say, no, she knew? That would be the first thing out of my mouth. If I'm the side chick and the entire world is hating me, the first thing I would say is, I'm not the side chick. She knew about it. Here are the receipts. So I can't be a mistress if she knows. I can't be the side piece if she co-signed it. This is what happened. Why, and also, why didn't she see that on her big Bethany podcast she did? She never said that at all. So it doesn't make any sense. You see, it doesn't make any sense at all. None of that ever made sense. So, and then, and again, this is what she's claiming in a legal document. But as we know, she has exaggerated on legal documents before. That's why she didn't even show up to the restraining order, order hearing against Sheena because she didn't want to be questioned about the um, authenticity of the documents she sent. She submitted for the restraining order. Remember when Sheena had the, Sheena still showed up. And Rachel and her legal team didn't even show up. And everybody was saying how um, Rachel was like faking the um, the scars and all that stuff and everything. Girl, girl. So we already know she has no problem blurring the lines when it comes to legal documentation. But this is but this is the thing. She then gets on her own podcast. Because she has her little Rachel Goes Road podcast. And this is and this is how I, I love dumb criminals. Because at this point, she is a criminal. Submitting fake legal documents, in my opinion, in my opinion, entertainment only, allegedly. Submitting fake documents for a payday and for some clout. It, to me, that should be a criminal act. I think it is criminal to intentionally do it, right? She got on her, she got on her own podcast thinking she's doing something. Talking about, I'm going to tell everyone who knew about it 
about about the affair. These are all the people. I'm not going to protect them. They're not protecting me. This is everybody who knew. So this is her own words on her own podcast. I'm going to play it for you guys. And I want you to know if you catch what I caught. Okay? So let's listen. This video is for vendor pump rules watchers if you're not keep scrolling. Oh my god, Rachel Levis woke up and chose violence today. She just released an episode on her podcast naming all the names of people who knew of her and Tom cheating before everybody found out. Let me just play that clip for you. That I would like to share. But before we get into the episode, I would like to just clear the air a little bit because, well, I suspect that people now know that some of our mutual friends have known about this affair while it was going on. I kind of just want to like clear the air on who those people were and whether or not I know for certain that they knew, but there were instances where it was pretty undeniable. So let's go through that list. Obviously, number one is Schwartz. He has known from the very beginning and we already know that because I've already dropped that bomb. But maybe people don't realize or have suspected, but Kyle Chan has also known. And Kyle Chan has been a good friend of Tom's for quite some time. And he was one of the people that was trying to talk some sense into Tom. But he also liked that secret for him. I just feel like it's a little bit of a double standard to be icing out a certain person for knowing. Yet Kyle Chan is still accepted into the group without any consequences. Just throwing that out there. The reason why I bring that up is because, as we know, the last episode that the cast filmed in San Francisco was for Kyle Chan's party, and nobody seems to have an issue with Kyle knowing. Next, Jason Bader is Tom Sandoval's drummer and band manager. You have seen him on Tom Sandoval's podcast. He has also known. It just goes to the double standard of Tom was allowed to tell his best friends, but I wasn't allowed to tell anybody. And if I did, he was not happy with me. So just a reminder to everyone, that is not love. All right, next, Max Boyens. I don't know the extent of what he knew about the affair, but Max Boyens was one of the people that we would meet up with regularly at one of the dive bars by Tom Sandoval's house. And, uh, you know, he didn't ask any questions, but it was an often thing that we would meet up and uh, it would be hard for me to think that he didn't have an inkling of knowledge that this was going on. This one's a little sus because Tom and I, we were very reckless and stupid and we decided, oh my God, this is really embarrassing. Um, but basically Tom and I like snuck off. I don't even know if I want to see these details, but basically Tom and I were cuddling in the social media room, which is downstairs of their house. and. There was a party going on and Ariana's best friend, Logan Cochran, walked into the social media room and he was like, oh, okay. And we were just like cuddling on the floor. We were clothed and everything. There wasn't a blanket Clothes or anything. It was just us looking at each other because like it was stupid. I thought I was in love. But Logan walked in on us and then he's like, oh, I'm really, I'm really messed up. Okay, bye. And then left and he's Ariana's best friend. So I'm sure that that got back to Ariana. You know, like Logan definitely had to have some sort of suspicion that this was going on because why else would we be cuddling? That's weird. Logan is also really close with Brad. I don't think Brad like really knew the extent of it, but I'm sure as things started coming out, it was like easy to piece these things together. So when I went to St. Louis, I met well, I've met Tom's mom before when she came to LA, but this time it was different because he was like bringing me to the house. It honestly felt like I was his girlfriend. Like it was the weirdest thing because obviously I wasn't, he had a girlfriend, but he like brought me to his mom's house and we made food and I slept downstairs in their like basement area and his mom like had the Christmas tree up. And I mean, it was weird. The way that Tom would present things made it feel so normal. So then it's like, oh, maybe I am overthinking this. And like, he had a way to convince me that it's all fine and to normalize it and to like relieve stress. And then we would also drink a lot. So that would help relieve the stress too. But yes, Tom Sandoval's mom also knew. And uh, 
I think that's a really messed up position to put your mom in because, you know, now she's keeping this secret for her son. But I think she also knew that Tom and Ariana haven't been good for quite some time. There is like a conversation that was had, you know, Ariana hasn't come to St. Louis in years. And, and this isn't to excuse it either because Tom needed to like make that public that they were no longer in a relationship. But yeah, there was trouble in paradise there. That concludes my list. There's no reason to be protecting these people. Rachel, you dumb dumb. Oh my God, you dumb dumb. She thought she was really doing something with that, but she just actually exposed herself and made her look worse. Number one, just her voice in general, the inflection in her voice, you could tell she was still like getting off on it. Like she was still kind of like proud of it. Like, oh my God, like his mom knew and like we were in this together. But there was a couple of factual things she said that exposes herself. Number one, she said, it was like I was his girlfriend, but obviously I wasn't. He had a girlfriend. Okay. So if you are admitting that when you were doing all this, you were not his girlfriend and you were cheating with him and he had a girlfriend, how does that coincide with your legal documentation saying that Ariana knew? How? how? Make, make that make sense. You also said, you named all these people, Kyle Chan, Ben, Logan, blah, 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 blah. You never named Ariana as someone who explicitly knew. You said you were cuddling with him in a social media room and Logan, who is Ariana's friend, was wasted, popped in and said, oh, I, I don't know what's going on and popped out. And then you said you assumed he told her. How does that translate into you having a legal document claiming that she had knowledge and that she planned it with Tom for season 11 when you just said out of your own mouth, she must have maybe known assumed because her best friend who was drunk saw us lying next to each other fully clothed in a room in our house while they were having a party. You also said that Kyle Chan quote, try to talk some sense into him. So again, you were very cognizant that what you were doing was wrong and that what he was doing was wrong. So I'm very confused as to how you're trying to blame everything on Tom when you clearly knew what you were doing was wrong. You clearly knew that he had a girlfriend who was not you. And you clearly knew that his friends did not... Um, approve of it when they're trying to talk sense into him. And you clearly did not know concretely that Ariana knew. And these are the words that you just said that we just listened to. So I'm confused how, you, how you're having a whole lawsuit saying that she knew and Scandival was planned. That to me doesn't prove anything. That to me proves that she didn't know that he was being sloppy. Also, nothing you said is new information. When Scandival hit and came out, Lala and Katie and Sheena all said that, uh, that, that there was already speculation and gossip and rumor about you and Tom, but that nobody wanted to say anything to Ariana because she would just shut it down and be very dismissive and be in her own little bubble of denial. That's already been documented. That's already been said. So nothing you just said is new news. You're not exposing anybody. You're not dropping any bombs. You basically just blew up what you said yourself. Like, do you have an example, Rachel? Did you ever talk to Ariana yourself? And also, even the whole thing about, at bur not Burning Man, Coachella, where you said, oh, we were in the hot tub. And he said that we had, that him and Ariana had an open relationship. Whether he said that or not, you still have yet to confirm that Ariana knew he was having an open relationship with you. So I don't know who your lawyers are. 
I don't know where they got their legal degree from, but if I were them, I would want to go back and do some fact checking and some due diligence because I'm not a lawyer, but I already could poke multiple holes in everything you had to say, sweetheart. I didn't hear you say Ariana knew. I heard you say Kyle knew, Max knew, his mama knew. Her friend who was wasted saw us laying on the ground fully clothed when they're all doing drugs and wasted rolling around on the floor and he just walked out. Um, what? And also it's already been documented that Lala, Sheena and Katie said that they even went to Ariana with speculation. And Ariana was like, no, shooting it down. And she basically was just like, just because you don't remember, even um, the season before last, when Katie was pissed about the whole Schwartz and uh, Rachel kissing, make out story, BS storyline. And Ariana said, and again, Katie, this is why, I don't know why you went into business with this woman. She doesn't like you, sweetheart. She looked Katie in her face and said, I know you don't like her, but I do. But yet now Ariana expects everybody in the world to have a problem with Tom Sandoval because she doesn't like him. But when Katie's whole husband, they were not even divorced yet, her whole husband, Katie was like, I don't want him making out with a girl in our friendship group. And Ariana looked Katie dead in her face and said, I know you don't like him or you don't like her, but I like her. Come on now. Come on. Who I, I don't I don't know who these lawyers are. <laughs> Maybe they're looking for a money grab too. But she just said out of her own mouth on her own podcast that Ariana did not know. She assumed her wasted friend must have maybe told her. How is how, girl? <laughs> girl. <laughs> Girl, <laughs> like you just said it yourself. You just said it yourself. You just said it yourself. And Kyle Chan, the reason why they don't have a problem with Kyle Chan is because isn't he like some jewelry guy? That's a business associate. That's not a friend. That's a business associate. Because people know who they can punk. Like, Ariana knows she can punk Sheena, but Ariana knows she can't punk Kyle Chan. So she's not going to punk Kyle Chan because Kyle Chan is more influential than she is. That's why at the end, that's why the season finale, they, they're all at his party. You know, that's why he was the one that um, Brock went to for Sheena's engagement ring. You know, he has more clout and money and connections. So Ariana is not going to be not going to punk Kyle Chan because she knows she can't punk him. She's going to punk Sheena. She's going to try and punk Lala, but Lala's going to punk her ass right back. You know, so that's why, you know, she's not saying, you know, it's me or him, Kyle, because she still wants something from Kyle. People know who they can punk and they know who they can't punk. That's why nobody has a problem with Kyle, because Kyle has something that they want. And when somebody has something that you want, you don't try and punk them because you because you don't think that they're beneath you. You only punk somebody that you think is beneath you because you think you can. So shut up, Rachel. You don't know what you're talking about. And I said it before and I'll say it again. Rachel needs to go away. She really does, because. To be honest with you, I feel like Tom Sandoval attracts women who are just like him. Kristen Doty, just like him. Ariana, just like him. Rachel, just like him. I would have I would have more of an open heart toward her if she did anything that wasn't so blatantly self-serving. And I'm not saying that she can't tell her story. I'm not saying she can't tell her experience. Obviously she can. But these ridiculous lawsuits, this 
self-aggrandizing podcast. It's it's just it's sick. It's 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 giving like the it's like Bethany, like delusional, just like just regurgitating your own BS over and over and over and over and over again. It's really weird and bizarre, but it's particularly disgusting when they're talking about such real topics of like revenge corn of, you know, mental health of, you know, things like that, where it's like, she's like, you guys, like he could tell his friends, but like, I couldn't tell mine. You guys, that's not love. Like, shut up, Rachel. Like, just shut up. You went to this man's house. You hung out with this man's mother, having sex with him. No, And just like you said, I wasn't his girlfriend. He had one. You had no problem doing that. I don't care what that says about him. What does that say about you? There is no way on God's green earth I would go to a man's house with his mother, have sex with him when he's in a full-on relationship with another woman. You need to stop blaming everything on Tom and take accountability for yourself. And you're not a child. She's pushing 30. You're a full-on adult, sweetheart. You need, and that's another thing. She doesn't take accountability for her, for her own actions. This might be an unpopular opinion, but I don't think Tom Sandoval groomed her. I don't. I think she was a willing participant. I think she went happily. I think it's a convenient narrative for her now. But again, she tells on herself. The, the inflection, the cadence, the energetic tone she has, she still is getting off on this. I'm like, you know, I wasn't even his girlfriend, but like I was there and like Kyle Chan knew and like Max knew and like Logan, her best friend knew. And like, I can't believe we were doing this, but like we were like in love and she's still getting off on it. She hasn't actually, and I'm only talking about her situation because there are situations where women, men, children, are manipulated and brainwashed and groomed into into these situations who do things that are unethical or non-consensual you know what i mean like there are real people who really do go through these situations i just don't think rachel is one of them i think it's a convenient narrative for her and that's what pisses me off because i think people who are true victims of this type of manipulation if and when they feel like going public, because it, you, nobody has to. If you're a victim of anything, you don't have to go public. Nobody, you don't owe anybody your story. But if and when they do go public, usually the root of it is I want to share what happened to me in case it helps save somebody else. But you don't get any of that with Rachel. You don't get any of that with her. It is all like, I'm going to expose these people and Ariana knew this and I'm going to do this lawsuit and like, I can't believe Tom did this and blah, 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 blah. Like that's what you, that's what you're getting from her. You don't get any of that raw, empathetic vulnerability of a victim slash survivor who's like, I am bearing this in case I can save one person. That's usually the energy and, and the tone when people are go public with their stories. That's usually what it's about. But you don't get any of that with Rachel. You don't get any of that with her. Also, the level of resentment and disdain that she still carries for Ariana. And I don't even like Ariana like that. Not again, not personal. I mean the persona that she plays on this show because it's not personal. I don't know her in real life. It's also very telling. Like to me, she's still trying to one up Ariana. She's still trying to, she still has a little disdain towards her. And I'm like, where does that disdain come from? Because to be honest with you, Ariana was the nicest to you if she was of any woman on this show because Tom was nice to you. And look where that got her, but there you go. So why do you have such a level of resentment and disdain for a woman whose man you were sleeping with? 
she acts like Ariana was sleeping with her man. That's the attitude she has. But true victims and true survivors of people who've been in manipulative, narcissistic relationships where they may have done something like maybe they were sleeping with a man who had who already was in a relationship and they did things out of character, but now they've worked on themselves and they've healed and they realized what was going on. They usually are so um, compassionate towards the person that they wronged where they they're like i i feel so bad for her she was a victim too you know he was controlling to her you know i did something because again human beings we sometimes do things out of character we sometimes do things that aren't ethical does it make you a horrible person doesn't make you a bad person you know people do get manipulated into situations but usually when people are good people who do unethical things who get out of character they are the quote other woman, other man, whatever the case may be. When they're truly out of it and they look back on it, they like, I'm so embarrassed. I feel so ashamed. I feel so, I'm so sorry to the woman that I hurt. I feel so sorry to the man that I hurt. You don't hear any of that with Rachel. Her whole narrative is about her, 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 me, 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 I, 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 blame, 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 shame, shame, shame. That's why I'm like, Rachel, miss me with all of this because you might be the biggest sociopath on this entire show. Jax might need to take some notes from you. Sandoval might need to take some notes from you because Rachel, the way you're moving, you to me are the biggest sociopath on this entire, on this entire show. Entire show. You might be the biggest one. Like, uh, for example, Kristen Doty, when um, when she got caught, you know, cheating with Jackson Stassi and everything, you know, after they worked through everything, you could tell she was like embarrassed and ashamed and she felt really bad and like all this stuff and like try to make it up. Like there's just things like that people do. But when they're good in their core. Not every action is good because we're human beings and we mess up. But when you're good in your core, you feel guilt. You feel bad. I don't get any of that from Rachel. She is really cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs and she's a scary being. I think she's the scariest one of all of them, to be perfect with you. Because Scandival or Tom Sandoval, you can see through him like... To me, he's textbook, low self-esteem, some narcissism, whatever the case. Again, I'm not a doctor. I don't diagnose. But clearly, you can see through his BS a mile away. He's going to deflect. He's going to be a hypocrite. He's going to be self-righteous. He's going to be grandiose, blah, 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 blah. Like He's textbook. You see through him a mile away. Jax, same. He's going to be grandiose. He's going to deflect. But then he'll take accountability. He'll be contrite, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, you see it again. Rachel. There's something else diabolical going on there with her. Something else is going on there. The disdain she still has for Ari. Like, Ariana didn't do anything to you, boo-boo. You slept with her man, not the other way around. So, <laughs> girl, she just needs to go away. She needs to go away. And she can take Leah McSweeney with her. And, that, and at this point, she can take Bethany with her, too. Because Bethany, we need to do a wellness check. What is going on with Bethany? She, in my Nini voice, she done lost it. Have you guys seen her on her TikTok and her Instagram? And what's going on with her child? I'm not going to speak on her child because I don't speak on people's children like that. But we need to do a wellness check on Miss Bethany. Because just because you have money doesn't mean things aren't going a little left money doesn't buy mental stability or happiness or whatever else the case may be but we need to do a wellness check on her because there that's a lot but that's kind of where i land with rachel versus ariana when it comes to them i'm team ariana all day long i think rachel is lying i don't think ariana knew do i think that people knew 
Yes. Do I think the signs were there? Yes. Do I think Ariana knew on some type of intuitive level, like how you always know? Yes. But do I think she consciously knew? No, not at all. I think she really was blindsided about it. I think she was drinking Tom's Kool-Aid. I think she was in full denial. You know, did she know intuitively? Yeah, we all know things intuitively, but did she know it on a conscious level? No. Do I think Scannaball was planned? No, because it was too, and another reason why I, I don't think it was planned, it was too seamless. It was just every, it just perfectly fell into place. It was too real for it to be faked. Because the shows now, you see, like, the work is showing on all the shows. The work is showing. All of the pre-planned boy BS, all of the fake fights and the storylines, it's so pre-planned. Like, the work is showing. We could li- I could literally write the script for the next seven episodes because we know what's going to happen. Scandaval worked too perfectly to be anything but life. Do you see? So I don't think that was planned at all. I think Rachel is just wanting her 15 minutes to continue. I think she's a bitter Betty. I think she's pissed because Bravo didn't give her the big number she wanted to come back. I think that she wants to do a big settlement payout. That's why she's suing them. I think her podcast is whack as hell. I don't personally, and I will stand 10 toes down on this, I don't think she's a victim. I think she was a willing participant. And I think she's using a very convenient narrative in order to not take accountability for her her own actions. Because she's not moving the way victims or survivors move. And I will stand 10 toes down on that. I, I don't think she's a victim of anything. I really, really don't. That's just how I feel. So I don't know what you guys think. Put it down below. Let's see. I have been talking for two hours. Let's see. What else? What do you guys want to talk about? Do does somebody want to come? Do you guys want to come up and talk? Do you want me to do another? I didn't do Kyle and Dorit. I, you know what? I'll do Beverly Hills another day. I'll drop the link in case anybody wants to come up. And chat.